you, Shelby, so much, and thank you, Athens County Public Library. Uh, as many of you know, we have done yoga, yoga over 50, uh, twice a day on Wednesdays for, gosh, many, many years, and it's sponsored by Friends of the Library. And even though we're not meeting together in person, we will be, but you can still support your Athens County Public Library by being a member of the Friends and or by donating books for their book sale. But please thank the Athens County Library for all the things they do for our community, children, adults, uh, all ages, the bicycles, and we can look at some of the fit kits they have now that you can check out. We just ask that you do them safely, perhaps with a friend in a safe area so that you have support and don't have any injuries or problems along the way. We are wearing masks in our room here, in our yoga room we use, and you can actually see sort of our new children's area outside too, which is pretty exciting. But we are allowed to take our masks off, huh. and I am grateful for that because we have enough distance. Shelby and I are both vaccinated, and that is certainly your personal choice, uh, but we hope folks are getting vaccinated and that we can keep our community as safe as possible. We're going to demonstrate through the next 10 sessions. We're going to try to block them into 30-minute segments so that you can pick and choose. And most of you who know me, Rebecca Wood, my classes and themes are very eclectic. Uh, it combines a little bit of yoga for everybody. Um, and I mean every body, any body style. We can all do with a little breath work. We can all do with a little gentle stretching. Uh, we can all do with a little extra laughing and having fun. And I can tell you some of my best moments and best teachers in yoga, particularly over the years, has been you. And I miss having all of you in this class. We are meeting uh, as a donation base at the West State Street ball fields. About 6 to 15 people join in. We move the tables about and uh, people bring their own gear. So you're welcome to do that as long as room allows and people wear their masks or don't, depending on how they feel, because we're outside. But uh, join in or do it at home with folks you feel safe with, but please consider seriously being safe. And if you need a support like a countertop or a sturdy chair that doesn't slide when you're doing balancing positions or the wall, please use that. We don't want any extra injuries, and it can happen in a moment. Some of the typical gear that we'll use, you can do chair yoga, which the rec center has offered and we do here at the library in our regular sessions sometimes. Um, or you can use the mat set up here on the ground. Normally we have two blankets we like and we also have various size blocks depending on what you need for a little extra support. Many of these have been donated by Linda Cochran, one of the other amazing uh, yoga teachers here for the Athens County Public Library System and one of my past teachers as well and good friend. So these are the soft foam, they're great, but when you're using these as opposed to the larger foam and some are wooden, some are cork, uh, I'll show you some of the other heavier dense closed cell foam, but standing thin things on end may or may not be the safest thing in the world. So when using blocks for support, you might want them flat or just on their one or two levels. As opposed to the larger blocks, they can be stable here, but you better be a little bit stable here too. So always consider the vantage point for safety. I really enjoy this size of block. The, uh, the cork blocks are great, but they can be a little heavy, particularly if you're squeezing them between your knees and your knees happen to be up the wall and you release and it bonks you on the noggin, it might hurt. When we sit in a chair for chair yoga, we want to have our feet hip width apart. We want our knees over our ankles. We want to be able to find the four points of the foot. And this chair isn't quite the right height for me, so I try to use a yoga mat to have a stable base, and it still doesn't allow me to find the four points of my feet. You can also use blocks, the low blocks. These make it slightly a bit too tall versus a little bit too low, so it just isn't a perfect world, and that's okay. But what do I mean by the four points of the feet, and what do I mean about being posturally uh, astute or aware? Only us, only ourselves, through our body awareness, through our proprioceptive sensitivities, where our body is in space, 
how our body feels, our vestibular system, our balance system, is going to give us that feedback loop to enhance our own posture, to enhance moving through this life a little more gracefully. So the four points of the feet, and this can occur on these nice firm blocks as well, are under the big toe mound, the baby toe mound, the inner heel, and the outer heel. And if you can feel the four points of your feet, your ankles are somewhat under your knees, the flesh is pulled gently away from the sits bones, the belly is gently trying to kiss the back ball, it's tucking up there, it's pulling the transverse abdominis up, which lifts the whole diaphragm up out of the pelvic bowl. Shoulders can relax down the back, palms can be somewhere, halfway up the thighs or resting gently rare position if that's comfortable for you, we can begin to find a comfortable seat. We can also find a comfortable position in standing by doing the same postural assessment. Uh, whenever we check in with our non-judgmental mind throughout our yoga session, we'll be able to say, ooh, I'm stumping a little forward, and when I do, I'm caving in, crushing all the vital organs, and I need to look up, that affects the cervical spine. This is often how we drive. This is not how we want to age gracefully, is it, Shelby? No. So we want to lift, engage, rest, and allow the breath to flow freely. Yoga is an exploration of yourself. Yoga is the connection, the yoke um, of the mind, the body, the spirit, I just find it a grounding, wonderful uh, study, a lifelong study for me. I've had many fabulous teachers. I'm excited about all of my teachers, and they range in techniques and style from laughing yoga to structural yoga to yen yoga <laughs> uh, to slow, subtle yoga, which is even more fascinating as we get to know the neurobiology and the neuroplasticity of the brain and slow twitch muscles and how all of this can apply to helping us find our breath, find our center, find ourselves and be happier in our skin. We're not striving for perfection. We're not trying to look great in funny colored tights. We're trying to find how to be comfortable uh, in our own body and how to allow that to be a part of our community relationship with other people as well. So yoga to me is that community of people. And again, I miss all the different people who used to sit in this room. I can say the names of the folks in their favorite positions. But we're going to get us started now with a small, gentle breath activity to center ourselves and get started. I'll do a couple hip openers for our first half an hour segment. Then I will move down to the, uh, I'll do some standing poses and we'll move down to the mat and the, the blankets. So the only thing we don't really have here, and if you really want to get comfortable for restorative or yin yoga would be bolsters. So those are some things that you can look at for your own home entourage of yoga equipment. But a lot of this stuff can just be folded up neatly, uh, things that you have around your house, so you don't have to run out and spend a lot of money. But it's pretty amazing what we can check out from our library system now. So we have the foam rollers. Uh, that's a unique form of torture that no, <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Uh, we have this interesting new, uh, what's the name of that ring again, Shelby? Uh, chirp wheel. The chirp wheel. I have not used that. I have a back bender that I use sometimes. We haven't blown up the large yoga balls, and they come in different sizes. Uh, we used to have a great yoga ball, have a ball class at the rec center, and that was a lot of fun. So there are a lot of things you can use. We'll, we'll talk about the straps here when we get ready to use them. But the longer the strap, the more secure the buckle and the lacing system in it, and the lighter weight, the lightweight plastic compared to the old metal rings, one last uh, potential for chipping a tooth or uh, having something accidentally hit you in the cheekbone when uh, you let it go or it accidentally swings away. So trying to maintain safety and awareness all the time is pretty handy. So I'm going to just start with my palms up. There are many type of meditation techniques and breath techniques. I'm going to move sideways on my chair for a moment. This isn't the best chair for this. 
But if I'm sitting like this again, this is not how I'm going to breathe very successfully. So I want to lift, and I want my breath to start to go into the basement, the lower belly, and the lower spine. We're going to just do a short sequence of this, and then you can expand this on your own. I'm going to roll my shoulders a few times to get the kinks out. And this can be bed yoga. This is what you do before you get out of bed in the morning is roll those shoulders a few times, move the arms back and forth, open and close any joints that have synovial fluid in them so you're waking up, hydrating and lubricating the joints, pointing and stretching the ankles, the toes, rolling around the world, your ankle joints. And there's nothing static about any of this. So if you need to change the posture, if you need to change the breast sequence, if you need to just take a break and lie down, your body is your guide, not me. I can assist you in safe practices and new ideas, a lot of silly jokes and laughter, but I certainly don't know what's going on inside your body or what you particularly need. So that's going to govern your practice, which I hope you're doing every day, at least 15 minutes a couple times a day. Breath work, 5 minutes, 7 minutes, 10 minutes, twice a day. Wow, pretty amazing and significant change in personal health and stress resiliency. So we're just going to start with a 5, 7, 8 breath. Uh, there's different numbers, different people associate it with it. 4, 6, 8, 5, 7, 9. Find what works for you, but we're going to begin to breathe and fill from the basement up. We're going to inhale through our nose, as long as, and if you ever feel uncomfortable with breath work, just stop and breathe normally. Eyes can be glancing down at the uh, earth, or they can be closed, whichever you feel more comfortable with. But we're going to inhale, filling from the lower basement to the count of five. We're going to pause to the count of six or seven. And then we're going to exhale to the count of eight or nine. We're going to repeat that. So that's a little bit of a fast tempo. You can slow it down just a little. There's many YouTube um, uh, assist uh, videos that you can also use with that. Uh, that can help you with this type of breath work. This again is going to calm the vagal nerve, calm the autonomic nervous system so that you're getting out of fight flight and you're moving into rest, digest, or friend and be, uh, attend and befriend. So that's a lot nicer place to be moving throughout your day from. It also increases the nitric oxide flowing through the blood vessels which helps with the tensile strength and the resiliency of the blood vessels uh, for cardiovascular health. So we'll just do three cycles of breath here, and then I'm going to move into a couple seated chair positions. Breathe along with me. Always engaging the lower abdominals. Even on the exhalation, I'm squeezing and lifting. Feet are engaged in the earth, gently pushing away. Find a chair that works for you. Holding. One more inhale. Also add movements to this so that you lift on the inhalation, pause, exhale, the ear can go to the shoulder on one side, or exhale, the chin can go to the chest. This is a lovely opening for the cervical spine. Inhalation for the opposite ear to the other shoulder, pause, exhale, chin to the chest. So there's many cycles and many different ways you can do your 
breath exercises or breath awareness. And this is a great way to move towards meditation. I'm not the best meditator in the world. I'm a little antsy for meditation, so walking meditation, gardening, spending time in the woods works a little better for me. But I'm actually learning to sit, and I'm learning to sit more through my breath. So finding a way to sit comfortably with props to support different body parts that may need a little extra attention or the wall is a great way to do it. I'm going to scooch out on the chair. I'm going to separate my legs a little bit. Feet can be a little pronated here. That's just fine. I'm going to lift with an inhalation again, belly button coming up and in, kissing the backbone, pulling in the transverse abdominis. And I'm going to exhale, lean out over my uh, right arm. And again, I'll be mirroring you, so I'll be saying it backwards. And if we were all in class, you would be giggling at me because probably about 50% of the time I'd say the wrong side. You have two sides, do one and then the other, if I cue you appropriately. So you can see that I don't get too worried about too many things in my yoga classes. This is a nice stretch for me. I have some SI issues. I have some pretty significant back issues missing a few discs. <laughs> uh, not too smart in some of my lifting or accidents over the years, sports injuries. But as I drop my sits bones, my ischial tuberosity on my opposite side, my left side, and as I plant and push gently my feet into the earth, all four points, and gently push down through this uh, right thigh, I can lift up out of my pelvic bowl. I can lengthen here where all of this aortic blood is flowing through and I can breathe. If I want to add a little more stretching depending on shoulder issues, who knows where your injury may be, but it's kind of like an exploration, my body through space. And that helps us become more aware of our proprioceptive ability. Where is my body in space as it's moving? Eyes can be opened or closed. I'm going to look out over my left shoulder now. My scapula is engaging. My core is engaging. Inhale up and look up. And exhale down. And stretch away. So gentle pressure on the inside of the thigh. And to neutral. Taking a moment to explore and feel the energy work, the interoception, how your body feels uh, as you move through these various activities. Lift with an inhalation, drop the opposite forearm to the opposite or left knee, dropping this hip into the chair. This actually is a lot of work for me because of the SI issue. So if you have SI joints, honor that. My last and most recent yoga teacher from uh, Subtle Yoga in North Carolina, Christine Colberry Weber, is amazing. And uh, really, one of the, her little catchphrases is, the pause is as important as the pose. And it really is if you're trying to integrate what's going on. So just by breathing and by moving the pressure of my feet into the earth, I can feel my chair slipping a little bit on this carpet. So again, at home, be safe. You don't want to be leaning against a wall table, or it would be rough if a wall moved, wouldn't it? But a table or a chair and then having it go sliding across the room would not be very appropriate. So we're going to explore a little bit here. Proprioceptive ability. Where is our body in space? How do my ribs feel when it feel when it fills with breath? How can I move my whole thoracic cavity? How can I welcome the world into my life? Walk the feet a little closer. Again, adjust the flesh away from the sit bones. Lift tall. And around the world here. One direction and then the other. 
So a lot of yoga can be done in chairs, and we can get quite expensive in chairs. In the bed, yin yoga is done a lot in hospital situations with people in beds, on the floors with lots of props so the body feels safe and secure and can let go into the pose. Sometimes it's just hard to let go. Trust issues, emotional issues, injuries that we hold in our body. We've got to work through stretching the feet. A few fun things that have been occurring, plantar fasciitis, neuromas in your feet. I've never had these problems before. The doctors, oh, you're over 60. <laughs> Welcome to getting old. I'm going, what? So just learning different actions and activities and yoga moves or stretches that you can do can help relieve most of this. You may need medication sometimes, but many times positive movement awareness, hydration uh, can work through a lot of these issues. So you notice how I assisted the leg up, taking my right hand under my right leg, bringing it up. This may be too much for some folks. You can adjust the bottom leg. You don't have to drop it all the way out to the side. Some people's knees or thighs will fall out. Depends on how your head of your femur is in the acetabulum of your hips. You may be an inner or outer rotator. So just opening the piriformis here, the rotating muscles of the thigh. Contemplation mudra. Mudras are hand positions in yoga. We're going to inhale, lift. And if you're doing this with me at home, you're going to notice, oh yeah, Shelby can be doing it with me too here in her chair. She'll be a yogi queen by the time we get finished with this. Uh, it'll be great. Oh, and moving forward. So this is a big stretch and a little movement. And then Again, stretch, pointing and flexing those feet. Assist the opposite leg up. You might notice a big difference from side to side. We are very different from side to side. Let the body sink into the position, the asana. I will be glancing in and out of asana, Sanskrit, I mean, uh, Sanskrit and just uh, common names for the various positions. But asana just means taking a seat with ease. How nice is that? And then exploring your body in that asana position and adding the breath and awareness and gentle exploration. So you can lift with an inhalation. You can also increase the action by gently pushing the foot into the earth. Changes the whole dynamics of the muscle trains, the fascial system. We'll be talking a lot about the fascia system. That is one thing I work with a lot. And exhale. Move a little forward. Again, we're opening the rotators, the hip rotators, the piriformis, some of the glutes. Inhale up, assist it down, and let's we'll jump it out. We'll take the little intervals periodically throughout the sessions, but if you can add two to three minute intervals where you're bringing your cardiac ability up above the 70% threshold, you can do this while watching a movie, TV, and you can get miles in. <laughs> but we're going to stop, breathe, pause. Shelby will turn this off and we'll take our first little five-minute break and then we'll come back for another 30-minute segment. Namaste.